What up, what up? Sloop A Fiasco, right here on WRUG Radio. Make sure you go get that food and liquor too in store September 25th. You heard? Stay tuned. Um, got a question about the um, comment you made earlier that um, Barack Obama did in terms of how they got taken out of contest. I saw the CNN, I mean, not CNN, that other thing, you know, Fox. Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly, you know, yeah, you know, I take over the show. That was pretty good. Um, but I noticed, like, with Jeremy Wright in the comments, he said, Goddamn America, and things like that. When, when you take stands like that and the way you write all your lyrics and everything, um, are you okay with it, you know, taking the hit? You mentioned earlier that you don't want you don't like to be constantly bashed, and who does? Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes, you know, we're behind you. Who pays the man, who pays the dude, you make a statement like that when everybody jumps on the statement, you tend to look back and everybody's gone. Yeah, like how you know, yeah, you'll take, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even, yeah. even the guys in the hip hop world, you know, you'll yeah. take those names. I, it, 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 they literally leave. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I face blackballing, I face people not wanting to go on tour with me, I face, um, being dropped from corporate sponsorships. I address it on my album, but um, you know, it's one of those things that's a very touchy situation. Again, everybody's American. A lot of people, a lot of black people specifically, rooted in campaign for Barack Obama. And just with the culture today, not just black people, but culture today, period. It's a, people have the blinders on, you know. Um, people people just kind of have blind faith in, in, in just the superficial, and just yeah. the exterior, and that is a part of our culture. It's part of our consumption culture, our materialist culture. We just more worried about what's on the outside than what's on the inside. So when you have someone, anyone, who opens it up, and I listen to Patriot, I listen to Fox News, I listen to all of that with just as, with my ears just as much open as I listen to the liberals and the independents because they're they're not saying they're not lying. You know, it's one thing if people just some people are lying, like uh, Glenn Beck is racist. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, there, there's others within that world, you know, from the Tea Party world, they're not lying. You know, they're not making this up. You yeah. know, it's not. It's not that. So when you have somebody who's a little bit more abrasive and a little bit more subversive, and I don't even say it normally. When I say it, when I say something, or I critique the president. It's because it's in the presidential office. I'm always doing it in comparison. Like it's always an example. Like this last, this last issue was I was using the president as an example of role models mm -hmm. and how okay he's a great this he does this he does this he does this he does this but he's also the biggest warmonger in the world. He's a simple. You know, it's the biggest arms dealer in the world for these four years that he's president. Unfortunately, he's the commander in chief. He controls the military. Um, and if he wanted, he could pull all the military out tomorrow. You would face the repercussions of that, whatever that may be, but you know you could do it, and it would be nobody dying at the hands of American soldiers and American bullets, which means people won't be getting mad at America anymore and becoming terrorists and want to kill Americans. Um, very simple. I'm apologizing about simplicity, but I, I take the hits. I don't expect anybody to kind of, you know, uh, you know, have my back to that point. You know, to the point where you, you, you are overthrowing your own morals and your own ethics and your own conscience just to believe in what your favorite rapper is saying. I yeah. definitely don't agree with that whatsoever. Um, but with that said, I plan on, you know, f and it's that I, when I say things, I say them personally, and it becomes professional. I'm recognizing that literally doing this promo tour mm -hmm. was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm going to speak my piece. Album September 25th. I hope you like it. You lay it out there. Peace. What do you think about no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that being said, there, there won't be another, um, what is it, Chinese cartoon? Japanese cartoon? No, no, no. There'll still, there'll still be music. Okay. I just mean, when I say industrial, um, I literally mean the music industry. When people say the music industry, gotcha. that's when I say industrial. It, because that comes with promotions and marketing marketing on the front end and then marketing your album and getting it ready so mad people can hear it and you just go through this whole process mm -hmm. and then when you go onto the public in this day and age where you don't have that what I was saying earlier that that uh, distance between the artist and the audience mm -hmm. you know and it's you have to t you literally if you were a journalist before you could put out a story you literally had to read the whole story you can't just come in and say yeah I heard from a blog that they said such and such and such and such because those blogs didn't exist you know, you have, and I learned the Washington Post said it because I was the only person who really cared about, you know, that really had access to the artists to do an interview. And they're going to do their thoroughness to it as opposed to just kind of shooting from hip journalistas and blogistas. Um, so it's just that process of change, and I'll be moving a little out of the fire range. Yeah, I appreciate you. Last question. One last question on uh, Carlos and Marty Sosa.